All right, so we're going to look now at special cases of parallelograms, which means things that are parallelograms uh, that have all the properties of parallelograms, that have the definition of parallelograms, which means both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. However, they have some additional things that are true about them, and we're going to give them special names. And these are mostly things that you've heard about. And so the big idea here is that these things that you've heard about, namely a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square, they inherit all of the properties of parallelograms because they are really just specific cases of parallelograms. So let's take a look at uh, just the definitions of them. And then we're going to talk about special things, other things that are true about these, these shapes. So one special parallelogram is a rhombus. And so a rhombus is a parallelogram where all of the sides are congruent. And that's the only thing that's true. Okay? However, just remember, because it's a parallelogram, all of the stuff that we've already said is true about parallelograms is also true about a rhombus. So we can take a look at this picture that says, OK, there's the definition. Okay? But we can add a ton of stuff to this picture and say, by the way, also, the top's parallel to the bottom. The left and the right-hand side are parallel because it's a parallelogram. That's the definition. We can also say opposite angles are congruent. Right? We can add this to the picture. We can say that these two angles are supplementary. So all of those other properties also apply to a rhombus. Right? So just keep that in mind. Okay? But the definition is we're going to be a little bit more specific and say not only are the top and the bottom congruent and the left hand side and the right hand side are congruent, but all of them are congruent. They're all the same measure. So maybe they're all like five. Okay? They're all the same measure. Okay? A rectangle. We know about rectangles. A rectangle is a parallelogram where all of the angles are right angles. So this is 90 and 90 and 90 and 90. Okay? A square is something that is actually both a rhombus and a rectangle at the same time. So it's a parallelogram where the sides are congruent, just like a rhombus, and the angles are 90 degree angles, just like a rectangle. So it actually inherits all of the properties of a rhombus, all of the properties of a rectangle, and obviously all of the properties of a parallelogram. Okay? So we're going to start off by focusing on a rhombus. We're going to say, if something's a rhombus, we know, again, everything that from parallelograms is true. We know the definition says that all the sides are congruent. And we're wondering, is there anything else that's also true about a rhombus? And so here are the two things, in addition to the definitions, that are also true. Okay? Properties of, a, of rhombi, which rhombi is just our plural vocabulary word if we're talking about many rhombus. The plural of rhombus is rhombi. Okay? So you'll see that word show up sometime. Okay, so if a parallelogram is a rhombus, here's something else that's true. Right? Not only is all are are the sides congruent, but the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So here's if we wanted to draw this in our rhombus, right? If I draw the one diagonal, okay, and I draw the other diagonal, okay, I'm claiming that when they cross each other, they cross at a right angle. Okay, so this angle in the middle will always be 90 degrees. And obviously all of the other three that we created, they will also be 90 degrees. So if you wanted to expand this, these are all 90 degree angles in the middle, right? And that's helpful, okay? Here's what the other property says. It says, if I were to draw both of my diagonals, okay, so there's a diagonal, and this is a diagonal, okay, then those diagonals bisect the angles at their endpoints, or the vertex at their endpoints. So if I go to the end of this diagonal, I'm hitting this one, which I'll, we'll call this like angle A, okay? What this property is claiming is that only in a rhombus, when you draw the diagonals, that this angle right here and this angle right here are equal to each other. They are bisected. Okay? And if you remember from properties of parallelograms, the opposite angles congruent. So if I go over here and say angle B, it's also going to be equal angles. Because A and B are equal to each other, they're opposite, then all four of these angles are actually equal angles. Okay? The same thing's going to be true with this one. If I call this one C and this one D, what I'm claiming is that if I were to bisect, or if I were to draw this diagonal in, I'm actually bisecting C, okay? Not necessarily the same as A and B, okay? But so I'm going to give it two arcs, right? And the same thing will be true on the other side because it's an equal angle, okay? So both of the ends of the diagonal get bisected, and I create all of these equal angles, right? And remember, I also have the 90s in the middle here, so that's going to be a, a helpful tool as well, All right? So if I take a look at this problem. I'm claiming that just by giving you this little angle ABD is 58 degrees, that you should be able to fill in angles all throughout the rest of the shape. Okay? So let's start off with angle 1. Using the first property, when two diagonals in a rhombus, which they're telling us it's rhombus ABCD, when the two diagonals are drawn, then the angles are in the middle are right angles. So this angle 1 
I know is a right angle, it is 90 degrees. Okay. All right, here's what else we can say. If this is 58, I can put another 58 here, right, because the diagonal of a rhombus bisects the angle, so these two pieces are equal. And the same thing is true on the other side, right? This is another 116 degree angle right here, which means this is made up of a 58 and a 58, right? So I can say angle 2 has got to be 58 degrees, and angle 3 also has to be 58 degrees. Okay. And now what I can do is I can say, if I take a look at this little triangle here, that if I have a 58 and a 90, angle 4 has to be the rest of it. So angle 4 has to be, it looks like, 32 degrees. right? And that again, if we wanted to spread this information even further, this has to be 32, this has to be 32, and this has to be 32, right? So that A and C will be both 64 degrees, and that property that says the diagonal bisects that will also be true, right? So if you take a look at this second problem, the same thing's happening right here. If this is 104, I know that all of these angles have to be equal to each other because P and R have to be equal, and I need to split P into equal pieces, and I need to split R into equal pieces. So if I have 104, it looks like I'm left with uh, 80, I'm sorry, 76 degrees, right? So I have 76 degrees left in this top triangle, and if these two pieces are equal to each other, then that means that these pieces have to be equal as well. This is a nice isosceles triangle here. So this looks like it would be 38 and 38. And again, the same thing's happening on the other side. I could transfer this 104 over, okay, and say, hey, look, isosceles triangle, 38 and 38, right? So this property helps us to fill in a lot of the angles when the angle P and angle R are bisected by the diagonal. And remember, this happens only in a rhombus, okay? So that's it. Those are the two additional properties for a rhombus. So again, in addition to the definition that all the sides are equal, and everything we know about parallelograms, we can say there's a lot of information about the diagonals. Okay? So here's your, your second type of shape. Okay? A parallelogram is a rectangle. Then the diagonals are congruent. Let me get rid of this word bisect. The diagonals are congruent. They do not bisect anything. That was true of a rums. Right? So we're going to say, here's again the situation that's happening. If this is a rectangle, right? let's draw in what we know about it. So all of the angles are right angles. Okay? That's the definition. And again, everything about parallelograms is true here. So opposite sides are equal, right? We know that the, the, side, the sides are parallel. We know that we get uh, congruent angles, which makes sense because everything's 90, congruent opposite angles, right? So if I were to draw my, uh, my diagonals in now, okay, here's a diagonal, okay, and I have another diagonal going this way. I'm claiming that if you measure, we'll give them some letters, right? A and B and C and D, okay? If you were to measure the length of AC, you would get the same length as if you measured the length of BD, right? So this is a very straightforward property that the diagonals just have the same length, okay? So if I take a look at this problem, they're saying that SF is a diagonal of a rectangle, so they're noting for us that's a rectangle. I know that SF should be equal to RB because they are the two diagonals. So I can say 2x plus 15 should be equal to 5x minus 12, right? So we can say that this looks like 3x is equal to 27, so x is equal to 9, and if I go back and plug that in because they're asking for the length of the diagonal, this looks like uh, 18 plus 15, it looks like these both have to be 33, right? So we can use that property to solve problems where they're giving us algebraic expressions that represent the uh, diagonals, okay? So one last problem. Okay. And it's very similar in nature. We're, we're doing the same thing. Uh, LN and MO are equal to each other because they are diagonal. So I can just say the property of rectangles tells me that LN is equal to MO. So I can say that 4x minus 17 is equal to 2x plus 13. And I can solve this one again. So 2x is equal to 30. x is equal to 15. Okay. And we can go back and plug in. This as 15 times 4 is 60. 60 minus 17. 60 minus 17 is 43. Right. So this is 43, and this has got to be also 43 as well because they're equal to each other. Right. And we can confirm that 2 times 15 is 30. 30 plus 13 also 43. Good. Worked out. Okay. So my diagonals were equal. And it's asking me now the second question. It's saying what type of triangle is PMN? So PMN is this top one right here. Right. So PMN. Uh, we can look at this and say, okay, um, what do we know about the pieces of this? Okay, so when we're thinking about this question, we actually have to think about something else that we know, and that is.
that this rectangle is also a parallelogram. So what do we know about parallelograms? Well, in parallelograms, the diagonals bisect each other. So watch what happens here. What I'm claiming is just by parallelogram rules, MP is equal to PO. Okay? And also, PL is equal to PN. And because these are equal, these are all actually entirely equal angles. So it looks like I have an isosceles triangle here. I have two sets of equal sides. Right? So I can say things like this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. Right? We can gather a lot more information when we put together all of these rules and come up with kind of a, a bigger consensus about what's happening in this rectangle.